Meet the blobs, two continent-sized mountains in the Earth's deep mantle that nobody understands. And the inner Earth moves mountains, study says, but that's a topic for another time. This is on Live Science Today by Brandon Spector. Amazing, amazing discovery near the bottom of Earth's mantle are two continent-sized blobs of hot, compressed rock. They're called Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces, LLSVPs. That's because seismic waves slow down as they pass through them, and the geologists usually just call them the blobs. Two of them, continent-sized blobs. Now, about halfway between your feet and the center of the Earth, these two continent-sized mountains of hot, compressed rock go right through the gut of our planet, and scientists know almost nothing about these things. Why they're like that, and what they do. So, technically, these mysterious pieces of uh, huge rocks are called Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces, LLSVPs, because seismic waves shuddering through the Earth always have to slow down when they pass through structures like this because of course the earth is not hollow now the mesmerizing image featured in the article on EOS the official news site of the American Geophysical Union or AGU for short gives us one of the most detailed views of these rocky anomalies and most scientists simply call them the blobs now geophysicists have known about these blobs since 1970s, but are not much closer to understanding them today than they were at that time. Quote, they're among the largest things inside the Earth, end quote. University of Maryland geologist Ved Letzik told EOS reporter Janessa Duncombe, and he added, and we literally don't know what they are, where they come from, how long they've been around, or what they do, end quote. And this is what they do know, these blobs begin thousands of miles below the Earth's surface, where the planet's rocky lower mantle meets the molten outer core. One blob lurks below the Pacific Ocean, and the other beneath Africa and parts of the Atlantic. Both are massive, stabbing up about halfway through the mantle and measuring as long as continents. This is according to Duncombe. And also, each blob stretches about a hundred times higher than Mount Everest, and if they sat on the planet's surface, the International Space Station would have to navigate around them. To get a better sense of their shape and scale, you can take a look at the stunning 3D map of the blobs at that Lessig and University of Cambridge seismologist Saint Kotar created in 2016. And this is, of course, uh, what you saw previously, and it has their name on it, Kotar Lessig. The blobs are vast, cascading plains. They've been likened to mountains of sand or intercontinental, interconnected pits of gravel. This is what Duncombe uh, uh, writes, and, but they're uh, lower or higher density than the surrounding mantle remains a point of contention among scientists. Equally a mystery is how, if at all, the blobs affect geological functions such as plate tectonics and volcanism. Well, I would venture today to say that they affect it a great deal. A more recent map of the structures presented by University of Oxford doctoral student Maria Chekmistrenko at the 2018 annual meeting of the AGU states that, uh, well, she advises that tips of the blobs might branch into plumes, magma plumes, that is, of hot material that brush up against volcanic hotspots just below Earth's surface. And what does this mean? Well, nobody knows, but it, can, uh, it may take many more decades to better understand the mystery and the enigma at the heart of our planet. And we're lucky that these blobs don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. And you can read in the link here below the, the full Duncombe article. This is amazing. This is on Live Science, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. 
But now we come to the other mystery. Well, it's not a mystery. We know that it happens. Again, on life science, inner earth moves mountains. This is what the study says. It's by Brett Israel. October 28, 2002, the, the moderate resolution imaging MODIS on NASA's Aqua satellite captured true color image of the ongoing eruptions of Europe's largest and most active volcano, Mount Etna. It's on the island of Sicily. You can see it here in the middle. There's a light ash plume right in the middle, if you can see it closely. Not the clouds, but the ash. The volcanoes of the Mediterranean, such as the explosive Mount Etna, technically should not exist, at least according to the old model of how volcanoes grow. But a new study reveals how they got there. Enormous sections of the Earth's crust and rocky plates floating on the scorching molten rock of the Earth, known as the mantle, can collide with each other, triggering volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and they generate, of course, mountain ranges. These collisions are the culprits that created many of the world's volcanoes and our mountain ranges, including those along the Pacific Ring of Fire. But some volcanic eruptions happen far from these crash sites. Well, one of them, for example, is Hawaii that erupted last spring. The new study detailing the uh, issue of journal Nature suggests that the mantle pushes up on the Earth's crust in some areas, creating extreme pressure that can cause volcanoes and mountains to grow. This is what the researchers said to study these areas. And this shoving of the mantle that created volcanoes of the Mediterranean, they said this is exactly what took place here. The rise and subsidence of different points of the Earth is not restricted to the exact locations of the plate boundary, but you can get tectonic activity away from the plate boundary. This is what the co-author Thurston Becker of University of South California, Los Angeles says. The Mediterranean is part of what geologists call a mobile belt, fragments of the Earth's crust that float between the much larger continental plates, and the research team believes their model could help predict volcanic hotspots in these mobile belts. And other belts include the North American Caldera, which includes the Rocky Mountains and Sierra Nevada and the Himalayas. Mantle material can sink at the plate boundary, then flow back upwards farther away, pushing on the crust. This process is called small scale, conve scale convection, and this slow but inexorable motion can move mountains. It can move mountains gradually and also through earthquakes and eruptions. The researchers were able to detect these crustal motions with a global positioning system, the GPS. The study found two mountain ranges raised almost entirely by mantle flow. According to the authors, the southern Meseta Central Plateau in Spain and the Massif Central in France. Processes like these to those in the Mediterranean may have been indirectly caused by intense 19th century New Madrid intraplate earthquake occurring in the middle of the tectonic plate instead of at the edges of it. Volcanic hotspots like the one that created Hawaii, though, are associated with a deeper upwelling and not with the studies model. But there are other volcanic sites, as example, Mount Etna of uh, Sicily in Italy, and volcanoes in China that may fit the researchers' model here. So in light of these two blobs that are floating on the Earth's core, they're stuck on the Earth's core, and you can see that they're uh, not homogeneous, they're sticking every which way, uh, we don't know what they exactly do. I mean, are they? do they flow? Do they have any uh, relation to the moon, um, the circles of the, the cycles of the earth, the cycles of the moon, and the effect that the moon has on our, for example, there are tides of the seas. Does that also have an effect, or even planetary alignments? Do they have an effect on these blobs that are uh, melted material? piercing through the gut of the, the planet. Now, I would venture to say, well, since the moon has effect on the seas and the oceans and bringing tides, especially in the northern hemisphere, you can see 
sometimes it's as much as what anywhere between six or ten feet depending where you are uh, and it's less of course less in the at the equator it may you know it may have um, some kind of relation on what happens to these blobs in the earth creating seismic activity and volcanic activity If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.